presentation on health by the Upjohn Company, makers of fine medicines through creative research. This equilateral triangle is a symbol of the modern idea of the health of man. It has a physical side, a mental side, and a social side. Each side interacts with the other two in the overall picture of health. But for now, let's take a look at the physical side. Of course, this physical side represents man's body at any age. And its condition is obviously important. But first of all, how can we tell whether or not a person is physically fit? Walking upstairs if you puff and you wheeze a lot, clutch at your heart and your abdomen pit, groaning and moaning and weak in the knees a lot, one might suspect you're not physically fit. Daily, if work is an eight-hour session of droopiness, poopiness, preference to sit, lagging and dragging, you give the impression of someone who's somewhat not physically fit. While at the pool, do you look like a jelly drop? When children point at you, are you chagrin? Go ahead, fatso, let's see the old belly flop. Splash out the water and knock out your wind. If you feel, act, or look sub or abnormally, making a target for some joker's wit, may we suggest in a manner informally, possibly you are not physically fit. Of course, the next question for man is, what is necessary for physical fitness? Since man is an animal, we can find some of the answers by observing animals in nature. Exercise is part of the daily routine of most animals because they have to move about to obtain the necessities of life. For example, there is the everlasting problem of trying to find a meal. Or trying to avoid being one. Animals eat only when they are hungry. Instinct tells each one what kind of food should be eaten, but instinct also warns them not to overeat. And when they are tired, animals simply rest. For physical fitness, a human being must meet the same requirements. Rest, proper food, and exercise. But why are these things important? First of all, 40% of the body's weight is made up of various muscles, and their condition depends upon how they are used. Here, a muscle in the arm serves as an example. Like any muscle that moves a part of the body, it is a bundle of long, elastic, fiber-like cells. Within each fiber, there are hundreds of tiny strands. When stimulated by impulses from a nerve, they telescope together, making the muscle fiber shorter. The contraction of a number of fibers causes the muscle to exert force, raising the forearm. Now, if the muscle regularly has to raise a little extra weight and then is given a resting period, a very interesting thing happens. In each fiber, the number of tiny strands actually becomes greater, giving it more power. Of course, increasing the strength of each fiber will make the whole muscle stronger and give it more endurance. In addition, the muscle will have better tone, a little more tension, like a finely tuned violin string. Regular activity has the same effect on every muscle, but it does things for other parts of the body, too. The body contains miles of veins, arteries, and capillaries, through which blood is pumped continuously by a very special muscle, the heart. The heart muscle must work even when the body is inactive. But when the body is exercised, the heart pumps harder and faster to supply more blood. And like any muscle, it too becomes stronger 
when it has a little extra work to do. Furthermore, where arteries and veins join muscle tissue, exercise actually causes the networks of tiny capillaries to increase. This makes them better able to supply food and oxygen used by the muscles for energy. But when any muscle is exercised, waste products are formed faster than they can be carried away. As these wastes accumulate, the muscle becomes less efficient and we feel tired. The muscle must be inactive for a time so that it can be cleansed of wastes and resupplied with food and oxygen. This is the reason that rest is essential. Of course, exercise uses up energy, and this brings up another requirement for physical fitness. Food, for it is our only source of energy. Food must furnish other essentials, too, for growth, repair, and regulation of the body. But for now, let's see how it is related to exercise. Every food contains energy locked within it, and when the food is eaten, the energy becomes available to the body. When this available energy is equaled by energy used up in activity, there is a state of balance. But if activity becomes less, over a period of time, the same amount of food will tip the scale with one inevitable result, overweight. The balance can be restored by either reducing the amount of food or increasing activity, or a bit of both. This isn't always easy, but for physical fitness, it is essential. Hey, kids, you're not falling for that old physical fitness routine, are you? Who needs it? These are modern times. Let me give you the picture. Listen, we got lawn mowers that run automatically. You can flake out while you're doing your yard. Even at work, you don't work too fanatically. Turn on the power and then disregard. Sidewalks and stairways, they move while you stand on them. Everyone rides, no one walks anymore. Washing the dishes, you don't lay a hand on them. Flick on a switch and relax and ignore. Motorization makes golfing less bothersome. 36 holes doesn't tire your feet. Doors of garages, which teed off your father some, now can be raised while you're in the front seat. We got hydraulics, electronics, electricity, buttons and levers to push and to hit. Exercise, schmexercise, what's the publicity? Tell me who needs to be physically fit. So, you see? What if you don't get a lot of exercise? And suppose you are a little chubby. What's to worry about? Man's modern society has indeed overcome much of the necessity for physical effort. But his body has not. Without enough activity, muscles become flabby and quickly lose their tone. And the muscle fibers become weaker because the number of contracting strands actually decreases. Capillary systems shrink and muscles receive less food and oxygen. The heart beats less vigorously and in time may become weaker and have less endurance. Too much fat makes all these problems worse. Holy smoke! I didn't know that. Hey, I gotta get back in shape. The person who has allowed himself to reach a poor physical state should take care to rebuild his body gradually. The weekend athlete who tries to regain fitness too quickly or too strenuously may end up even worse off than before. Now he tells me. Of course, lack of physical fitness may not always bring such dire consequences. But at any age, it can mean that individuals simply can't do many things they would enjoy. If the physical side of the health triangle is weak, the other sides can be affected. For example, not being accepted because of unattractive appearance can damage the social side. Lack of vitality can bring dullness of the mind and weaken the mental side. But when the physical side is fit, the other sides are strengthened. And whoever you are, this means keeping the body you have in the best condition you can. This is especially important in youth because the body is still growing, but also future years can reflect carelessness now in developing good habits of exercise, rest, and proper diet. It takes some effort, but you can benefit for the rest of your life. 
only you can make the choice. The health of man is like an equilateral triangle, completely dependent on the length and strength of each side. This film is part of a continuing program by the Upjohn Company in the interest of a better understanding of health.